Hello, uh, good evening. We're here for our first uh, budget meeting of the season. And um, yeah, and I just want to let uh, residents of Luce to know that, um, you know, we understand the, the budget is, um, you know, there's a lot of work to do. You know, uh, costs are high. Uh, I know people are concerned. I fielded a lot of communications and, and I'm concerned too. And I can assure you that um, myself and the rest of the council will do our uh, very best to be um, good stewards of taxpayer dollars. And uh, with that, if I can have you two introduce yourselves and kick us off. Certainly. Hi, Mr. Mayor and the City Council. Good evening. Uh, Heather Hunter. I'm the City Administrator for the City of Lewiston. Hi, Mayor and Council. Tracy Roy, the Finance Director for the City of Lewiston. So I will be kicking off. We're kind of doing two meetings in one tonight. So um, it's the initial budget overview combined with the agenda item that we had on tonight's discussion, um, our session and agenda. So we have the budget overview. We're going to be talking about a few housekeeping items. That's how um, not only you can put things on the parking list, but how citizens can email in the public comment and so forth to provide feedback. Uh, we'll talk about personnel, fringe, and capital detail. And then we will move on to the kind of public works suite, which includes City Hall, the parking garages, and, and then all of the various divisions that fall under public works. So that's kind of the discussion for tonight. Looking at municipal expenditures right now as we stand, this is with a base budget. As a reminder, no new programs and services are in there at this juncture. We are looking at a $6.8 million increase, or just under 12%. Well, it didn't like that, did it? <laughs> Not a good way to start. That's, That's why we need new computers in the budget. <laughs> yeah, okay. So keep going to the end. It goes jump straight to the end. All right, we'll do this another way. Um, we'll have to do it this way because it's jumping to the end right now. So right now, uh, departments requested, we uh, eliminated about $3.36 million from those requests. Uh, 600, or, uh, 586 were flat out eliminations. Um, just under $2.8 million have been moved to fund balance. As a reminder, we do have a fund balance policy that we'll talk about a little bit more, but that allows for one-time expenditures and capital to be funded through our surplus um, to move from those from the remove those from the operating budget. Looking at our categories right now, um, we, as most municipalities and quite frankly most private sector, are experiencing labor shortages and um, increased wages. So personnel is up just under three million dollars. Fringe benefits, we're looking at just under $1.4 million. We have a slight increase in debt service of $345,000. This is going to be slow going doing this, but we'll do it. So our next group is the joint agencies. Um, between the requests, that includes the Lewiston Auburn Airport, the 911 Center, and the transit system. Those requests are up about $106,000. Supplies, we have an increase of $618,000. Um, the lion's share of that is in one line item, and that's gasoline and diesel. Um, contractual services has a smattering of, of cost drivers. Um, that increase is about $1.3 million. The bulk of that increase, it falls in the utilities. And then we're seeing that across the board. On the revenue side of the house, we are have a 6.6% 6 .6 increase of a little more than a uh, million dollars. We're projecting excise tax to be up just under $300,000. State revenue sharing, we, as we were publishing this, we got the initial um, state revenue sharing estimates. So I'm happy to say this is a line item that will be able to have a positive adjustment to help reduce that tax rate that was published. General assistance is up by $194,000. That is the state's portion 
of the increase in those costs, the state reimburses at a 70% level. So when expenditures increase, this revenue line item will increase as well correspondingly. We have a small increase in taxes and permit, our licenses and permits of $20,000. All parking related revenue is up by a conservative $14,000. We are anticipating having all of the garages back online this summer. So again, not really knowing the full impact of who still desires to park in the parking garages, as well as those um, remote workers that are still working remotely. Um, we were fairly conservative on this estimate at that amount. From an investment side of the house for our earnings, we are looking about a $218,000 increase in this rising interest rate environment. And probably the, the, the largest decrease in revenue that we're seeing right now is in the tipping fees of just under $54,000. New programs and requests, just as a reminder, not only for you at the council, but also for the viewing audience, um, the departments go through and evaluate if they were to do new programming or if they wanted to expand, what does that look like? and it allows you to evaluate those requests independently of the base budget. So the base budget is built on current activities, current programs, per current operations, and, and any natural fluctuations in those pricing. All of the new program and services, and I believe Tracy sent you a file out that has the detail behind those, those totaled $1,153,000. Um, of that, just under nine thousand. $900,000 are new positions or additional labor, adding capacity into the departments. We have about $111,000 in contractual services, and then $145,800 in capital and just new programming. This year, we also had new programs and services requested in our tax increment financing fund, as well as the utility funds that totaled $57,000. So that um, portion of that well, is all listed in your budget book in detail. You can see the individual line item positions and so forth. From a capital side of the house, right now there is no <coughs> capital in the budget. It has all been moved to fund balance. So we are looking at fund balance of $6.56 million. We have city bonds of just under $15 million. And then the school side of the house, we're looking at $3,386,000 worth of bond requests. So earlier I mentioned the fund balance analysis. And according to what the policy is, it's a snapshot at year end, and it's based upon audited numbers. So it is not something that's still in, in limbo, it is actual numbers, and, and it's a finished fiscal year, so we feel you know, secure about that, be, that money being there. So we use the snapshot as of June 30th, 2022. And we looked at, at the unassigned city portion of fund balance. So that's independent of the school side of the house and their fund balance. It's just our allocation of our fund balance. And we base it upon revenues and transfers. And in this case, that revenues and transfers is a consolidated number of both city and school. So when our fund balance is applied from a percentage basis, it's a very conservative approach because we're using the higher revenue but only our portion of the fund balance. Right now, as of year end, our coverage was 17.92%. Our policy has a floor of 8% and a ceiling of 12%. So clearly, we are above the ceiling. So what the policy calls for at that point in time is to do exactly what we're doing through this process is look at one-time capital or one-time operational cost and capital and move those to fund balance surplus. In the past, the, the city councils, and this is several terms of city council, they've viewed that 10% sweet spot um, as the goal. You know, clearly as we're starting this budget process, we are well above that. 
So when you look at what we've used in the current year, we had $156,000 that we've used for supplemental appropriation. Uh, that includes the uh, primarily the lion's share of that are the additional police cruisers to get them on a timely basis that you approved. That reduced that amount down to 17.82%. We have a proposed usage in the budget that you have been presented of $6,554,000. That brings us down to 13.56. So still an amount well above that 10% sweet spot. One of the things that Tracy and I will be doing is combing through the line item budgets to see if there is anything else that could potentially be moved to this funding source. And again, that would directly impact the tax rate. You have a joint meeting with the school committee on Monday night at 530. Um, right now, what the city, s school superintendent has presented is a budget that has revenues down by $976,000, or 1.4%. They're bringing a little over $5.1 million of fund balance forward. And then their total expenditures are up $6,883,000, or just under 7%. When we look at our budget and look at um, various, we have the consumer price index, which was a change when they redid the new charter amendment language that says we are going to take a snapshot of the CPI based upon the Northeast urban area. And we use the December 31st point of time as that benchmark for that. So if you look at 1231, 2022, we had a 6.1% increase in the consumer price index in this particular Northeast index. That was an increase from last year of 5.9. Right now, the way it stands, we are at 16%. So we are well above the charter requirement for that. We need to do about $3.65 million in, in additional reductions, and that's either reducing expenditures or increasing revenue, because this is based upon the tax levy. This is not an expenditure-only measurement. It's that net impact on the taxpayers. That's what we would have to reduce it by. Um, otherwise, if we exceed the 6.1%, it would need a two-thirds majority of vote for the council to override that. Additionally, there is the LD1 measurement. That's the state required measurement. Um, this has been on the books, geez, for a number of years. Um, we as a city have never had an issue being over the limitation um, because of the amount of um, reduced impact of the non operating or non tax revenues, if you will. So it's based upon two components. The state sets the real personal income growth, and that's 4.31%. Right now, we are expecting property to grow about 1%. This is an estimate that the chief assessor provides. This is refined, and then we do this calculation you know, once the, the whole budget has gone through the process, which allows us to spend 5.31%. Um, Right now, again, we're at that 16.57% proposed. So even though percentage-wise we are above, there's also a dollar amount limit. And you will see our dollar amount limit is $61,800,000. Our proposal is at $40,683,000. So we continue to be well under that state LD1 levy limitation. Right now, based upon all the moving targets, the assessed value is expected to increase about 20 million. So that's up just under uh, uh, 1%. From a county standpoint, because we collect county tax as part of our tax rate, um, they have a tax requirement of $3,327,000. 
That's a 4.43% increase, our six cents on our tax rate. So this is you know, uh, a slide that I will be happy to adjust or get it adjusted as we move through this budget process that shows right now our projected tax rate for this year is $34.46, uh, just under a $6 increase. That is not a level that I am comfortable with. That is not a level that the school superintendent is comfortable with. That is not a level that the staff is comfortable with. So we are, as with most budgets, we started this way last year. Last year, I think we had a, over a $4 increase. At, at this starting point. And then we are, we're able to whittle it down and come in at a reduced tax rate. Even after you approved that tax or that budget last year, the chief assessor found additional valuation and we were able to reduce that tax rate further. I would remind the viewing audience also that the previous two years, we actually held the tax rate constant and or reduced the tax rate during COVID recognizing the uncertainty during those times. So Lewiston leadership has a, a significantly um, great record of really combing through the budget and re reducing those impacts on the tax rate for our taxpayers. From an enterprise standpoint, we have water, sewer, and stormwater. Right now, we are not anticipating any utility fund rate increase at this point in time. Again, we are not anticipating any utility fund rate increase for FY24. So looking at the particulars of the three utilities, you see the water revenue fund is, or the water funds revenue, I should say, is just under $6.8 million. It pretty much balances with the expenditures. We're you know, running a slight surplus of $18,000. We have significant enough cash to absorb that, so we are, again, not recommending a rate increase. Sewer right now, because of the impact on the Water Pollution Control Authority, is running an operating deficit of about $900,000. Again, because we have significant cash on hand, we are able to absorb that deficit without a rate increase. I will say, though, if there is a significant change with the disposals of sludge that we've been hearing and, and seeing in the newspaper um, halfway through this, we may have to revisit that. Stormwater, again, is running at an operating deficit of $668,000, and again, they have a significant cash balance to be able to absorb that operating deficit, and you see all of the ending cash balances after the estimates um, listed on the screen there. So looking at the water fund, right now um, expenditures are up about 5.3%. You'll see some same trends that you will see with general funds where payroll and benefits are up about $65,000. Debt service in this particular case is down. We had some bonds that were paid off this, this year or this fiscal year, so that impacted positively on the budget of a reduction of $59,000. Operating expenses, including uh, the lion's share of this is in chemicals. Uh, is $619,000, and then capital is down about um, $284,000. Sewers following that same trend, hovering right around that 6% increase in expenditures. Uh, payroll and benefits are up $94,000. Debt service in this particular case because of um, a lot of the CSO split requirements of debt service. Um, increased of $90,000. We had an, a decrease in operating expense this year, and that is offset by the increase in the tre treatment plant. You'll see that significant bump there at $179,000. And then capital is up by $307,000. Stormwater has a you know, small increase in revenues of $66,000. It's 
least impacted by the expenditure increase of $93,000 or 2.55%. You have a smaller increase in payroll and benefits of $15,000. You see the debt service of $56,000 also increased. And then smaller red, uh, jumps in operating costs and capital. So this covers the broader overview of the, the budget. We'll jump into kind of the meat and potatoes, but I would be remiss um, not recognizing all the people that play a role in putting these numbers together. Um, our process starts right around Halloween with the capital improvement program that is pretty much finalized the week before Christmas. During that time, we start the operating budget. And so we have you know, this in addition to all the other tasks. So everybody does their due diligence in forming these numbers. So I would like to extend the extent, uh, the, my appreciation to the department heads and all the employees that, that work diligently on this budget. And additionally, I'd like to recognize Tracy because this is her first Lewiston budget. So she's starting out with a bang and then we'll go from here. So a couple of the housekeeping items and I'll get this off the screen so it's not so distracting here. Um, from past budget workshops, just to kind of remind both you and you know the constituency that's watching tonight is the Lewiston budget can be viewed in detail on the city's website. It is under the finance department, under finance reports, under the city's operating budget. You also have hard copies available at the Lewiston Public Library and the city clerk's office. Additionally, um, if anybody has any questions or comments or suggestions, they can email me directly at hunter at lewistonmain.gov or public comment at lewistonmain.gov. All public comments are always shared with the entire council. So you, those items you will see as well as um, the management team. We talked about the school joint meeting on Monday beginning at 5.30 at the Green Ladle. <coughs> I think the only other um, thing I'd like to mention is typically you know, as a reminder, these first couple meetings are overviews of showing you where the cost drivers are. Um, it allows you the opportunity to put things on the parking list or the list or the, you know, however you want to refer to it. And it takes those and um, puts that all in one format that allows you to revisit those once we start general discussions. That way you can hear all the cost drivers at the same point in time and then we'll, we'll bring that list back to you. So just let us know what subject matters you wanna put on that list and, and we'll um, keep that a running total for that. So the next piece is the personal services and fringe. That begins on page 20 of your budget book. So we'll kind of dive right in. So FY24, uh, this shows you kind of how the positions are spread out through the various departments of the uh, city. Um, the FY24's positions include the two frozen police officers added back, as well as two R men in the fire department. Are those are replacement personnel that allows us to float various uh, personnel at various shifts to reduce the firefighters' overtime. It also increases the hours of an age-friendly coordinator, so you will notice that in the recreation that. 0.75 position increase, that's that age-friendly coordinator. Um, I will remind you, or at least point out, even with these changes and the increases that we have seen in personnel the last couple of years, the city is still 58 positions down from our peak in 1994. That's 58 positions down from our peak. So again, we are still trying to do you know, more with less, you know, using technology to our advantage and so forth. In the new programs and services, there are 11 and a half 
positions requested um, for labor, and they run the gamut from a DEI part-time intern, as well as an HR benefits specialist. We have a deputy fire chief that's in there. Um, the engineering tech position, two highway workers, some solid waste worker, some equipment mechanics. Um, we have a maintenance building maintenance worker at the library. Um, no, sorry, armory and two rec positions for programming. So that's on that new program and service sheet. So if you jump back to page 18, you'll see that listing. Last year was the first year on the new programs and services. We kind of did a little shark tank thing at one of our management team meeting. And each department head that had an item on the new program and service pitched those, those requests. And then each department got to take that back and rank them in what they view to be a priority order. And then we combined all those rankings and you will see the final list or the final ranking on page 18 of how we would program or how we would prioritize the new program and services um, if any of them were to be considered. So jumping back to page 21 and 22, looking at the regular wages, we have an increase of $2.75 million or 14.5%. Um, I will tell you that it includes settled, con settled contracts for our three public safety units. It does not include settled con tracks for MSCA, our ProTech, our PW units. So the other thing that I will share with you, some of the comparatives for FY23 or 2023's budget to 2024 may look completely out of whack because we have not allocated our salary reserve yet. We do that at the end of the fiscal year. So that allows us if we have some um, vacancies, we, if we allocated that too early, it would sow a surplus unnecessarily. So we wait till year end to allocate the salary reserve. So you may see some quirky variances from that standpoint. And as I notice, uh, noted, we still have um, four vacant positions that were included in this basic budget. The patrol officers and the ARP positions. Um, all of the other positions include um, the lion's share of the increase falls in the police accounts or the police div divisions. You will see that in the 4212, 4213. Um, those are the adjustments the council approved in order to address the significant vacancy crisis we had in our police department. Um, it also includes uh, the annualized positions and some of the uh, impacts that we did because it was annualized, it prorated this current year and then we annualized it for next year. Also, we were able to get, and I'm learning the police language, um, five blue pen, which means those are officers that already have significant experience. They can start day one instead of going to the academy and then not being really available to do uh, police work for almost six months to a year, depending on where they're falling. So that had an impact as well as their cost of living increase in steps. When you look at uh, the salary reserve account back in FY18, so the salary reserve account, it falls in that 4971 division, that first column. Um, we get credits back from the utilities for overhead, so like for treasury c collecting water bills, um, HR doing you know, position onboarding they pay an overhead charge for that. For that overhead charge um, increase this year by just under $400,000, so, or totaled 
four hundred thousand dollars. So you will see that impacting that the debt effect of the salary reserve. So the salary reserve is set at five hundred and ninety-five thousand dollars. We've got that credit from the utilities. So you will see the net impact of that is that one hundred and ninety-six thousand dollars there. Uh, excuse me, Administrator Hunter, what page are you? We're on 22. Thank you. Yep. One other additional component is the DROP program or the Retired in Place program. The city has 13 individuals throughout various departments that have taken advantage of that. That allows them to retire in place. They do their retirement uh, cash out, and then at that point, they get rehired at a reduced rate. And that reduced rate is a reduction of anywhere between five and 15%, depending on which employment contract that you're looking at. Um, I will also note that the city administrator's division was decreased by the $80,000 SEWELL grant that you approved at your last council meeting. So that has been reflected within this budget. When you're looking at overtime, which is on the bottom of page 22, the top of page 23, you have the total. We have an increase there of just under $200,000 or 8.7%. Again, we are programming certain increases in there for salary adjustments as well as the um, public safety contracts that are in place. You will notice fire has reduced their overtime by about 36,500. That's based upon us filling those two R position, those replacement positions that I talked about. They dropped $600,000 in overtime from last year. 36,000. Oh, hold on. They, they budgeted 1.275 in overtime, and they actually used 657,000? That's because it's not finished. That's, that's, as, of, that's as of February. Okay. Okay, so that's our, ex, that's our cost per day, to, uh, to date. I was going to really congratulate the fire chief, but I'll hold that, <laughs> hold that for a few minutes. So, um, the other piece that you will ha see is police had an increase based upon uh, wage adjustments of just under um, $197,000. And we had about a $20,000 increase in public works operation, uh, primarily in municipal garage. They've had um, a significant um, issue in trying to fill some of their mechanic positions. So in order to you know, keep the fleet going, they've incurred um, overtime at this particular um, cycle in their budget. The temporary wages, which falls on page 23, we have an increase of $27,700 there, or 9%. Um, Pretty much all of that is in elections. Actually, more of that is in elections. We have three elections next year. So we have the city local election, we have the presidential preference primary in March, and then we have the state primary in, in June. So we, that's why those temporary wages are up so much in that particular one. We have a small decrease in police. Um, they perform outside details. That is a credit balance. So they anticipate not uh, performing about $20,000 worth of those details. The net increase of all of the library wages, and you'll see those noted as 552 through 55, um, the building monitor account. So all of those total an increase of just under $14,000 for our library temporary wages. We have the category of other th fees. That includes the stipends that are paid to you, the mayor, um, finance committee, and the planning board and board of appeals. It also includes attorney fees and the city's auditors. Um, we anticipate that increasing about $1,500. Jumping to fringe benefits, overall the fringe benefits have increased by $1.4 million 
are just under 13 percent. We anticipate, based upon anticipated retirements, severance pay increasing by about $50,000. Main state retirement, this is the first, um, I think, full year that we've had everything in place for our public safety because they have switched to um, a special main state retirement plan. Um, so the benefit that we had is even though the wages have increased in the public safety units, the rate that the employer has to pay actually decreased. It went from 13.4 to 12.8. So, and then the non-public safety coverage actually stayed, the employer rate actually stayed the same for Maine State Retirement at 10.2. I don't recall a year where that has happened in, in several years. So that is at least something that positive that is helping the budget. Looking at the deferred comp and FICA, we have increases there a combined total of about $131,000, and again, that's based upon salary adjustments. Retirement health savings, um, just a reminder of what that program is, it's a conversion of sick and vacation time that are converted to pay and deposited into a retirement savings account that allows um, health insurance benefits and so forth upon retirement that you can withdraw at that point. We anticipate that to increase about $62,000. I will say because of the snapshot in time, that number is actually finalized after the budget has been produced. So we will be bringing forward a reduction in that estimate based upon the actual numbers that we're seeing. We have one city pensioner still on the plan. Um, the last time I talked to her, she's a police um, spouse and I think she was 97 or 98. She still answers her home phone. So she gets a cost of living increase. Um, so that is bumping about $1,500. Looking at the health insurance buyouts, we kind of do those hand in hand. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we had anticipated this past January to um, <coughs> have a eight and a half percent increase and ended up only being two percent right now we are anticipating a bigger increase january of next year so you will see that that bumped um, by almost three hundred and thirty two thousand dollars right now the health care educator program is flat funded we are evaluating that program and determining how we want to handle that moving forward so we aren't anticipating any increase in those fees right now. Boston Mutual is a legacy life insurance policy. It's a paid up policy um, for those people that had participated. Um, the plan was closed to new enrollees back in 1989. So based upon just the average indexing of the, the tables, there was a slight increase of $2,000 there. Um, we have a similar increase in our flexible spending account of the around $2,000, reflecting some of the decreases in the forfeitures. The health reimbursement arrangement, the city, when we switched over to the PPO 500, we set up health reimbursement accounts that offers $1,200 for the single plan and $2,400 for employee, child, and family plan. We are looking at about $46,000 of an increase there based upon, again, the forfeitures. That's a lose it or use it plan. And um, more and more people are fin finding ways to take advantage of, of using those funds, whether it be dental, glasses, whatever. Right now, we are anticipating about an $80,000 decrease in workers' compensation. Um, I, I'll put a caveat on that because the mod rates are those rates that we use by class actually decrease for this year. But we are self-insured. And as you remember during the audit right now, the liability is about $5 million underfunded when you look at the whole plan in totality. So we have programmed $250,000 from fund balance to fund a portion of that. 
that may be something that the council considers increasing that amount from fund balance to kind of reduce that unfunded liability. So that will be something that Tracy and I will bring back to you to kind of touch base on that. And then we had a slight increase on unemployment compensation of about $500. Again, we are, un, are self-insured for unemployment as well. Um, we saw a big jump during COVID as the state allowed the part-time workers to seek unemployment benefits. We are still seeing that, and also the state is significantly behind billing the unemployment benefits out. So we feel that the amount is at least reasonable and we don't anticipate any uh, further adjustments. The other category, which is on the bottom of page 24, both of those accounts are in municipal garage. That is, and this is kind of a legacy thing since I started here. Um, this reflects the charge outs that municipal garage charges both the other departments and other agencies. So when you see the billing journal entry, those are internal rental rate charges. So that would be municipal garage charging snow removal versus the billing cash, those are where it would be for outside agencies. As a whole, we're seeing that the um, billing had increased by $135,000, but that was in the journal entry line item. So if you look at this line item in total totality, and when Tracy talks about public works in a few minutes on vehicle rental and those vehicle rental accounts increasing, if you decrease that rental account, you have to decrease the credit. The net effect uh, in all of public works is zero on that particular line item. So that covers the personal service and fringe benefit portion. On page 35 is the listing of capital. And it got a little small in font, so I apologize for that. So on page 35 and 36, that is what is slated to be funded through fund balance. So you'll see the description along the right-hand side. Um, once you flip over to the back, the two point $8 million, those were removed from the operating budget and funded through here. The 3781 our projects moved from the LCIP at this point to be funded through fund balance. It would be up to the council, but at any point in time, if there are items that you want to put on the parking list to revisit from that, we can take those at any point in time. If you want to email those, we can, you know, start in parking list with that as well. Um, so that, that has great flexibility. Prior to the finalization of the budget, we will revisit all of these pages. So you will have another crack, bite at the apple with that. Yes. So you're saying, do you mind using the we're going to have a chance to go through this line by line. Yes. You're just giving us an overview tonight. Yes. You're not expecting a lot of feedback from us tonight. If, if you have items, I will take them and put them on the parking list if you, you know, want to email them. But yes, we plan on revisiting this list again. Okay. So at what point? That would be up to you. At what? Because I want to go through line by line. Okay. And, and when do we go line? And we, we just we skipped right through the personnel section. I'd like to go back to that at some point. Okay. If you're just giving us an overview, fine. I'm fine with that. But at some point, I'd like to go through this more in depth. So, when we can do it one of two ways. At any point in time, you can stop Tracy and I, mm -hmm. and you can say, "All right, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about this. Put this on the parking list." We can do that at that point. You can say, I want to revisit this, this, and this, and we can do that during the general discussion. It's entirely up to you. These are your workshops to make decisions. Okay. So I guess if it would please the council and I'd ask the mayor, 
that before we move on to a different section, that we go back to that personnel and we can talk about that and get a little more in depth. Once we're done that, and we can move on. Or if we're going to do that later on, I'm fine. I just want to know when are we going to have an opportunity to dig, to dig deep in and dive in and say yes, no, add, subtract. So that's my big question. Yeah, understood. Thank you, Councillor LaChapelle. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot the term you just used, the what, general discussion? There are several meetings towards the end that are set up for general discussion. So in the past, typically what the council has done is you ask any questions that you want on that subject matter. If there's spe specific personal service questions you have, our fringe benefit, and then we can either answer them right there or we can put them on the parking lot to revisit. That's up to the council. If uh, they, you know, from that's how you want this budget season to go. It, it, that's up to you. It's your purview. Understood. Um, I would. Uh, um, no, I, I'm definitely uh, understand what you're saying. I would suggest that we continue to move through material, and if there's items that we want to flag for general discussion, then we could revisit them then um, in order to, to move through the, uh, um, the agenda this evening. Thank you. I, I felt very rushed last year going through this, and I think there's a majority of the counselors that would really like to dive deep into it, and there are going to be a lot of cuts. And so at what point do we start talking about them? If she presented us, now that it's fresh on my mind on the, on the department side, that's why, you know, starting on page 25, uh, which 25 is basically a synopsis of what you just gave us earlier, if I'm not mistaken, um, is, is going through a few of those things um, before we jump into 35 to 37. That's just my opinion and my, my feelings. And if the general consensus is to do that, that's fine. Or just tell me when we're going to have a chance to dive into it. That's all I'm saying. When are the general discussions slated? Are they sprinkled throughout or are they at the tail end? They're at the tail end. Would it not be easier? So it's a question to you, understanding where we're coming from. If we all of a sudden said, okay, we want to add a million dollars into this section. We want to take $2 million out of this other section just to keep some kind of a running balance where we're at. Uh, as we go through each budget, budget session, say, okay, yeah, you guys have cut $5 million so far, or you've added $5 million so far. Where, what does it look like? So I would think it'd be easier to start doing it. So now. if you've identified personnel services, let's talk about that now. Mm -hmm. Before, My, oh, oh. No, 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 go, go ahead. You, you finish, okay. sorry. And, and I guess um, we have a lot of people in the audience I recognize some of them. I'm assuming these are all our department heads that are sitting behind us. I don't have the mirror, but based upon <laughs> when I walk through, yes, that's most okay. of our department How heads. How many department heads do we have or directors position? I want to say loosely 18. Don't quote me on this that. This is budget season. Again, we're all real green. Can we? They know who we are. I don't know who they are. Certainly. Can we just take a second so we know who we're talking to out here and just have them introduce themselves? Certainly. So why don't we start with the front I, row there? Megan, do you want to I, I guess if, yes, if the... De <laughs> Marianne. Marianne. Yeah. Marianne's going to be coming up with us in a minute. <laughs> Hi, my name is Megan Bates. I'm the Deputy for Maintenance and Operations at Public Works. I hope I'm a familiar face, Lincoln Jeffers, Development Director. Jeff, Alan, might as well start the train. <laughs> I would suggest to help facilitate this, if everyone can just line up there, that would be great. I'm up. Jeff Boley, Manager of Engineering. Alan Ward, Purchasing Agent. Hi, Nicole Welch, Recreation Director. Elaine Brackett, Social Services Director. David Hedegar, Planning and Code Enforcement. David St. Pierre, Chief of Police. I'm Mark Heron, I'm the Fire Chief. Dan Rodrigue, Electrical Superintendent. 
Louis Turcott, facilities manager. Uh, I feel like such a bad host, not uh, having everyone introduce themselves before. So thank you all very much. And thank you for being here. So typically what will happen is when we get into the specific department reviews, that's when the department heads, you'll get the opportunity to, to meet them and put names with faces again. For some that may not be so familiar with you, uh, to you. Uh, Excellent, thank you. And um, sorry, just continuing the conversation that we were having a second ago. Um, I, I understand the, the desire to stop and look at things like in the moment. However, we are kind of looking at this whole budget in totality. And so it might be helpful for just a frame of reference for us all to just you know, kind of get through it uh, in, in terms of understanding it and then going back to decide you know, what's um, you know, how we feel about certain items um, versus getting bogged down on page two when we still are learning about pages, um, you know, three through 100, if, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, we're, comments from the council. Or, do you, sorry, did you have anything else, no, Councilor Lester? I, just at some point, just tell me when. Right, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm biting, biting. We're, yeah. We'll, we'll discuss it right now. Um, uh, Councilor McCarthy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think what I would like to see is I'd like to see us uh, make notes as we go through these, email them to, to um, Administrative Hunter, and then perhaps um, bump one of the general sessions up halfway through so that we can, you know, halfway through we can deal with everything that's in the parking lot to that point, and then we can continue that process, putting stuff in the parking lot, and then one of the general sessions after we could deal with everything that we've dealt with like on the second half. So we break it into things flow, we can make notes, we don't, and then we can have a, a whole night of discussion on what we've done the first half of the budget. This is, you know, everyone will have their projects that they think should be cut or their personnel that they think should be cut or, or added or whatever, but I just think that halfway through I think would make sense. I don't think I want to take it to the end because then like um, Councillor LaChapelle said, last year I felt rushed too. And it's not, I don't, it had nothing to do with the process. It had everything to do with not understanding the process. So I think that, I think in my opinion, that's the way I would like to go. Thank you. Councillor Clement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I too would like to kind of look at this in totality, get the overview. It is a rather complex situation that we're looking at. There's some moving parts in here. I think it makes more sense to get a general picture of what we're looking at. Then we can go back and take it item by item. I think what Councilor McCarthy just suggested might be a, a very good idea. Mm -hmm. Give us uh, a few sessions and then we can start breaking things out. It is complex. Uh, I know that I've already had a lot of feedback, and I might say that none of it has been positive based on what has been presented thus far. There are some people out there that are probably sharpening up their pitchforks and ready to march on City Hall at any given moment. I hope not, but we've got to do something about this. But I think that makes more sense to get the overview, see what it is we're faced with, then we can go back and look at the various components. And, um, or sorry, go ahead. Uh, oh. I'm all set. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You bet. Um, yeah, I, I guess in hearing uh, from the council, we need uh, ample time to, to discuss things after we learn about things. And so um, to Councilor McCarthy's point, I would certainly not want to, you know, wait until the, the final minute for a general, um, you know, discussion. And then we have to be here until 4 a.m. because the, the deadline is fast upon us. So, yeah, if we can, you know. Just knowing that um, we will be having lots of questions and then, you know, kind of working that, uh, just being aware of that so that way we can have time to discuss everything before we're down to the wire, I, I think is part of the concern as well. Okay. Uh, Councilor McCarthy. Thank you. The other aspect of that is you'll have a running list of all of our thoughts and you can put your thoughts to them and it gives you time to formulate a response positive or negatively to our suggestions. That's appreciated. So I think we'll at least move forward. I would ask that if there are questions, particularly as we're going through the department, um, the sooner we get those questions, the easier we can have 
time to research them, get you a, a, a thorough answer, and then that gives you time to decide what you want to do with that answer. So, um, you know, keep that in mind as well. If I can just speak to that for a second. So I understand the, the workflow here. We will email you uh, email you questions or, or something like that. Um, but this, this budget process is, is, a, is a public process. And so um, what probably shouldn't happen is we email you and then you email us back and then it's all kind of decided out of the public eye. No, and I'm sorry, Mr. May, but tra traditionally what happens is whether it's a public comment question or a council question, we take those and then usually the next workshop, we start with the, what those questions are and what those we answers are. We dress them are. publicly. Exactly. Excellent. Okay. And nope, then we on. keep doing that through the entire process. All right. Thank you for that clarification. Yes. We're, we're on the same page now. Yes. So... At this point, I know we t uh, started talking about page 37, the LCIP. Um, kind of the first column there on the left talks about what was initially requested, what's been deferred at this point in time. The other sources column is, makes up of two pieces. One, those projects that are eligible for CDBG funding, and then the lion's share of that uh, other sources is the fund balance. Leaving the last column that indicates at least what's still potentially bond funding or considered for bond funding um, at this juncture. So at this point, I will hand the baton to Tracy. She's going to talk about general government and parking garages and public works. And I'll bring up our Public Works Director, Marian Brinchek. So we're going to start on page 49. We're going to start with the parking garages and the general government property parking. In all, the um, general government properties and parking is overall increased by 137,879, um, or 31.4%, um, under City Hall. The increases of um, 57,964 for contracted services are mostly in the electrical, um, heating, and utilities. You're going to see this year that we have broken those three out before they used to be budgeted altogether in util utilities. We're breaking those three out due to the fact that we're going to be tracking the JCI project. Um, so it's easier for us to track those differences if all three are split out. So you're going to see that in the areas throughout the budget that are under that current JCI contract. And just as a reminder for the council, that's the Johnson Control that we're doing the energy efficiency that we're looking at um, breaking even or having the savings, the energy, kilowatt usage savings and so forth. So you'll see an increase due to the delivery cost within um, CMP or the company that we bid out for for delivery. EDF, um, they're out of France. They were the low bid. Um, they came in under uh, two other bidders. So this year you will see an increase um, in all of the CMP utilities. So another increase in that area for City Hall is repairs to equipment. That's $7,242. That's in the access control systems contracts. You'll see in cleaning, it has increased $960. That's a slight increase. The current cleaning contract ends this fiscal year. <coughs> so we will be going into a new contract in fiscal year 24. So there'll be a slight increase um, for the cleaning. The repairs for building had a decrease of 1,200, and that has, we've seen decreases in the electrical contractor repairs due to the fact that we are um, starting with the JCI controls, so we're estimating decreases in those costs for the electrical. So also on page 49 is 85 Park Street. Um, this is the 
fourth operating year after repurposing this building from the state, renting the property of 15,000. As the, the um, violation bureau to house the joint police agency services, this is a joint task force group that uses this building along with the police department. You will see in the contracted services an increase of 10,689. Of course, the, the bulk of it is in the utilities um, at $12,418. You'll see a decrease in repairs to equipment of 929. That's due to the HVAC um, preventive maintenance contract. Um, it was decreased due to us having the JCI controls maintenance, they now cover all the filters within that maintenance agreement. So you're gonna see a decrease in that line item. Um, a, in this line item, you'll see a decrease in the cleaning services. Unlike the others, you'll see increases. This will actually decrease 300 because they're estimating that um, the police department will be out of that building for a short time of that fiscal year. Um, so they're taking that little savings on the supplies you'll see we have an increase of $250 uh, with the police moving out of this location the material for sands and salt <coughs> for the doorway will need to be taken care of um, so they're estimating an increase in that material to make sure that the doorways are sanded and salted so on the Oak Street parking facilities also on page 49. The overall increase of 16,350 or 32.2%. The increase in contracted service, again, is with the utilities and the electrical of 8,788. As I mentioned above, you'll see that it, certain ones will be broken out, and this is one of them. The repairs to the building is decreasing uh, 13,000, that's due to the pressure washing um, was moved out and is being recommended under the fund balance cover of 13,000 this year. Last year it was in the budget, this year um, we're gonna move it out to fund balance if it's approved. And then under miscellaneous services, there's an increase of 20,000. This is the garage security so you'll see this in three different garages. It's the $60,000 contract that we split between the three different garages. So you'll see that in two other. Um, let's see. And then the Canal Street and um, Centerville parking is on page 50. So the overall increase of 26137 or 97.5%. The contracted services increased 26,137. Again, this is the utilities and the electrical going up. And the miscellaneous services of the 20,000 that was mentioned in the prior parking garage for the security. Along with the outside rental um, is decreasing 1,500. This is due to the top of the garage not being plowed. Uh, there is only one garage that they plow on the top, and you'll see that as we go through. But this is one that they do not, um, due to the usage, is not needed. Repairs to equipments increased slightly by 880 due to the emergency light inspection for compliance. You'll see this in a couple of the other um, garages. Repairs to buildings also had a slight increase of 1,400 in materials and labor of general um, repairs due to the vandalism within that parking garage. So the next parking garage is Chestnut Street Parking Garage. That's also on page 50. The overall increase of $7,032 or 20% increase. The increase for contracted services is 7,032 of which the increase of utility and electricals is 11,900. It's offset by the decrease in the outside rental of 4,000. This is due for not having that top level plowed for snow. Um, $1,000 for sweeping service increase. And then this will reduce, um, Actually, that was a reduction, sorry. $1,000 uh, reduction for sweeping service. This was reduced this year due to 
the purchase of the mini sweeper that they purchased so that they're not having to go out and rent for that because um, they did the purchase for that. An increase in repairs and equipment of $525 for the emergency light system inspection for compliance as mentioned in the prior repairs for building of 180 this is for the exterior stairway window cleaning and then for the fixed cost we have a land lease um, with LA Railroad Company for the Lincoln and Cedar street lots um, this remained flat for 3960 so that brings us to the south gateway parking garage that's on page 50 and 51 kind of two lines on 51 the overall increase of 25,463 or 39.2 percent the contracted services increased by 25,463 <laughs> of which the utility and electrical had a uh, increase of 3,646 and then we saw an increase of 500 in outside rentals um, this is due to the estimated increase budgeting for the top this one will um, have their uh, top of the garage plowed the repairs for equipment, 347 for the emergency light system inspection for being in compliance. We see an increase of $670 in repairs and build, building, that's for the exterior stairway cleaning. And th this is the third one that has that miscellaneous services. You'll see an increase for 20,000, that is for the security, the security service that we have for the three. The next is Lincoln Street Parking Garage. That's on page 51. You'll see an overall decrease in this of $6,006, or a decrease of 11%. Uh, the decrease of 6006 is all within um, removing the outside rentals of 13000 and then you see a slight increase in utilities and electrical for 5992 so that is all of the parking garage and the buildings do you want to uh, uh, councillor scott thank you a couple of questions can you hear me oh, it's working weird try the the next one over so that one works oh, that may be why <laughs> i did break it is that so, one live to just add that to the budget please yes. that's right <laughs> So a couple of questions on the parking garages. First off, telephone. What's a telephone cost at a parking garage when we don't have anybody working at the parking garages and we're not taking any fees? It's for the credit card line. So that's gonna, okay, so we're anticipating that coming back on when? Yes. Okay, and that's gonna be this year that's gonna come back on. Yes. On the miscellaneous services, I know we're contracting for security and I'm wondering if where the police force has more or up to a better percentage rate of police officers is that something that we can look at I can put it on the it was a note I already made so yes great we can put that on the list thank you $60,000 yes $60,000 yeah it's enough to hire another officer so oh, Councilor McCarthy <laughs> just a quick question the land lease for the southern gateway is a lot higher than any others why is that forty one thousand four hundred and twenty four dollars because one is with the railroad company and the other one is with Franklin property company enough said thank you uh, I, I I think I heard the story of how that came to be and that took quite a bit to get that parking garage that's correct you're right yes mm -hmm. um, Councilor LaChapelle. Um, what kind of impact have we had with the $20,000 miscellaneous service? Um, have we heard results from the, the, from the people that are, that are parking there? Um, there have been significant um, commentary regarding the they are available, they see things. Um, one of the other notes that I had is they produce reports for the police department 
on as they do their daily reviews. They provide feedback on what they're seeing. Um, we can get a summary of those and get it out to the council Please. so you are able to evaluate that. Okay. Um, I see that we have not put the camera systems in here. You've, you've put that on the LCIP. Instead. And fund balance. And fund balance. Yes, those are eligible for a fund balance operation. So the question now, and I'm coming back, it's just more of a question. If we're going to spend $80,000 per garage for a camera system, we're spending $20,000 for security, where are those cameras? Is there a main station that somebody's looking at these cameras, or are they just recorded? Um, if they see something, can they call police and say, hey, we get got a problem on this street third floor um, to have if, if we have that many if we're spending eighty thousand dollars for cameras I'm certain we're seeing the entire building Dave um, St. Pierre Thank certainly I, I can certainly answer that um, we do have we monitor all of those cameras can I tell you that there's somebody watching it at every given moment no absolutely not um, some of it is is more of a deterrent than an actual in hopes of catching somebody in the act of doing something um, I know the the watch commanders on a regular basis review those if there's if time permits of course you know they're not just sitting there watching the cameras but um, we do send people to proactively take care of issues throughout the city. We have several cameras um, at various locations all through the city, including the parking garages, um, and we do utilize that. We now have, and I'll talk about this next Tuesday, our new um, crime reduction unit that we've already been sending officers from that unit to various locations because officers are monitoring the cameras and pointing them in the right direction to where they're going to go, try to enforce what we're seeing on the cameras. So it doesn't get reviewed all the time. It's not, you know, monitored 24/7. There's nobody sitting behind a big screen, um, like some large cities just doing that and sending officers based on what they're seeing. But um, a lot of it, we, we use it as evidence, you know, because we see that a crime happened. Somebody's spray painting in the in the in the thing. We can put out uh, images of their photographs, which we do on a regular basis that we have obtained from those security cameras. Are you pleased with the independent service, the, the security service that we've hired out? Yes. Uh, so far, we've heard very good um, accolades. Um, I went to Berman and Simmons not too long ago, and the staff there was, thank you so much for, for having them there. Uh, it creates a, a good sense of security for them. Uh, many of the, uh, the uh, business people downtown have mentioned that to my walking beat officer that they're very content that these people are there and visible. They drive around the all of the parking garages with a flashing light and they're pretty obvious that they're there and they're not afraid to get out and move people along. And they like like this uh, city administrator said is that they actually send us a report on a regular basis and report out to our support services lieutenant with their findings, what you know, what they see as a problem. Um, so it's an extra set of eyes, you know. Is it perfect? I'd say probably not, but it does help us a lot. Thank you. Uh, Chief, um, and it's my also uh, it's also my understanding that uh, in the moment when there's a situation, the cameras are uh, are an eye in the sky for the uh, police department. Is is that correct? Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Is oftentimes we'll actually sit and review them and send officers. Like the watch commander will be sitting there looking at the cameras because they're always up on the screen. Um, you know, there's uh, I don't know. I want to say 85 to 100 cameras in that vicinity throughout the city, including the parking garages. Uh, a lot of things happen in those stairways that you couldn't imagine happen. Um, as the Lieutenant of Support Service, or the previous Lieutenant of Support Services, when I had that position, uh, I think Deputy Administrator O'Malley will attest that I found a lot of things that happened and we were able to take uh, enforcement action based on what I saw or what I presented. Or oftentimes our Public Works Department will be in there first thing at 7 o'clock and they'll find something happened and address it with us. We'll go back on the camera and find who was responsible for doing that and charge them accordingly. Thank you, Chief. Um, Councillor Scott. And one more question, if I might, just as a reminder, is it one security officer per garage or is it one security officer for all three of these garages? It is one for all of the garages. They uh, randomly go from one to another. Um, they don't have a particular, you know, from one they'll be at seven to eight o'clock. You know, we want them to ran make it random so people don't know when to expect that they're actually going to be there. 
And what are the hours uh, that those uh, security officers are there? I believe they start at six in the morning and go until, uh, I, I'd have to double check on that, but um, I, I don't exactly remember the, the time periods, but we have them starting from early in the morning and go till the end of business so that they're seen in the morning as well as in the afternoon by the business community. Yeah, I was thinking that was like seven to 5.30. Yeah, I think that sounds accurate, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So we're going to move to actual um, public works on page 60 to 66. So within the budget is not included is the new services. As Heather mentioned earlier, um, there are 687,806 um, requests from public works for new services to highway workers total in 113,234. Two mechanic class A's total in 159,772. An engineer tech three total in 78,743. Solid waste worker 61,688. Building division worker 64,009, uh, sorry, 64,819. Sidewalk condition assessment of 35,000. Speed data and feedback signs of 15,000. Below ground trash containers at 20,000. Contracted landscape and maintenance at 91,200. GPS field line robot at 33,350. And project management software at 15,000 in general fund, and then another 45,000 in the utilities department will cover. Stop just. Okay. So those were uh, the new program and service requests. Those are not in the budget. That's just what public service asked for. Those positions, <coughs> those contracted. So that's not on page 18. That's. N that is. It. That, that is, that is, that is on page 18. It's not included in the regular. Budget. It's not included in the regular budget. So, like she had mentioned, the um, engineering tech that's there, the project management software. So, as a reminder, as we're going through these budget, you'll hear two pieces. You'll hear a reminder of what the department asked for for new program and services, and then we'll talk about what's in the base budget. Mm -hmm. But it's just to kind of revisit that. You know, if there are questions on that new program and service since the department head is there, as well as what's in the base bar budget since the department head is here as well. Uh, Councilor LaChapelle, please continue. What is below ground trash containers? I don't want to sound foolish, but. It I actually is an oversized container that gets dug into the ground so that it's a regular sized garbage can that you visually see, but it holds 10 times the amount of trash. So you, you unload I, it with a, with a hoist. The hoist pulls it right out? Yeah, and they empty it all at one time. So I for high of, trash areas is where I we get that one out. in front of my store? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's overflowing. It does have the right uh, slot so that people can't put bags of garbage in it either. Okay. Thank you. So we'll start on page 60 for Public Works Administration. Their overall increase is $13,008 or 4.2%. The um, public service, uh, the wages and salaries increased of 7208 The contracted service increase of 5900 You'll see an increase in vehicle rentals of 2700 as you'll see in most of the vehicle lines um, in the account, these are for the rental charges that Heather had mentioned earlier, that they rent out the vehicles from the municipal garage. So you'll see those charges in there. Most of them have increased a little bit. This is due to the surcharge for the gas. Um, and then under increase for service of training for 4,000, this is for an additional national conference for the deputy director and supervising training. Under fixed costs, you'll see a decrease of $100. This was a decrease in the dues, uh, removed the chamber meetings from that line. So you'll see a decrease on that. 
Next is the engineering department uh, that's also on page 60. You'll see an overall increase of 25,663 or 26.6% increase under the public services increase of 23,709. This is due to the engineers that were hired, were hired at, they were at a higher qualification. So you'll see that along with the colas and the steps, that's why there's an increase of the 23,709 in that line. The contracted services, you'll see an increase of 3,224. The increase again is in vehicle rental of 4,428. This is offset by a decrease in the maintenance and license of 962 for the AutoCAD subscription is going down. Under supplies, you'll see a decrease of 1,530. This is under the department apparel of which 1,610 decreased due to the employees choosing not to wear the uniforms. So it will save the city that portion. Fixed cost increase of 2,600 due to the engineer and license renewal, which is only biannual. So you see this every two years. So next year you'll see it go down, but every two years they need to have their license renewed. So just to kind of jump back to the apparel line item, because I saw some scrunchy faces. Um, the engineering department, it's an elective. <coughs> they, are, they go out on job sites, so they were given the option to either you know, purchase uniforms and wear those or you know, maintain their own normal clothing. So that's the piece that, that we have more electing to not buy into the uniform option. So that it's not a requirement in that division. Councillor Scott? Do they go to the job on a, in a truck, in a public works truck? Yes. Okay, so they're identified anyways. Yes. Okay, thank you. And the safety vest as well, says okay. Wilson Public Works right. on the back. Most of them have hard hats, they have their IDs, yeah, yeah. the whole nine yards, so yes. Any other questions on those first two public works divisions? Okay. Councilor Lachabelle. Yes, thank you. Um, I highlighted all these vehicle rentals and I came up to $1.4 million in vehicle rentals. So thank you for clearing that up. Yes. Because um, I was rather concerned we're, we're renting, easy rental is somebody's getting a lot of our money. No, so it, it is with the municipal garage. So yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Clement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Quick question. Uh, engineering department we were down to one engineer at one time here very recently where do we stand now we are fully staffed proudly awesome fully staffed defining as how many there's, there's nine staff members there's a asset management as well as some paving management and four engineers thank you and we you know Marion's being somewhat humble we were able to attract some seasoned experienced engineers which is it allowed them to given the number of public works projects and ARPA grant funding and so forth that are really enabled to, them to hit the ground running so highway so next we're going to go to highway on page 61 the overall increase of 71,363 or 4% Wages and salaries and are increased by 1,662. This is due to steps and increases. The contract to service increase of $67,222 is an increase in telephone for 4,800. For tablets, you're gonna see a decrease in another line. They were um, budget in it in a, a miscellaneous service line so it got moved up to where it should be so you'll see a decrease of 4,800 in that line utilities of course is up 16,089 and again an increase in the vehicle rentals of 37,200 for this due to the gas surplus charge and the amount of vehicles renting the line item for paint, the street paint, is up 7,563. This is a contract service um, that's serviced out, and it's a new contract year. 
in fiscal year 24, our contract ends in 23. So we're seeing an increase in that. Um, repairs in signs, 4,760 for repairs of, of signs. In service training, you'll see an increase of 1,070. This is due to the main local roads training for the new employees. Uh, this will be offset by a decrease, of course, like I mentioned before, in the miscellaneous services um, is where they had the tablets before we moved them up into telephone. Um, supplies had a total increase of $2,109. Material material had an increase of 2455 attributed to material cost and pricing for the hot and cold patch that they use. Department apparel is up $364 for the boot allowance and um, tree crew. Public service um, safety supplies is up $1,000. This is due to the cost of hard hats, vests, safety glasses, <coughs> gloves. You'll see an offset decrease in the small tools and construction material of $710 and $1,700 due to actual budget to actual. Fixed cost, you'll see an increase of $370. Uh, these are the dues for the dig safe. It's estimated at 10%. Winter operations is on page 61 and 62. You'll see an overall increase of 123,712 or 9%. Here you'll see a decrease of 4,092, which is attributed to the, um, the cross training, the cross charging of employees for different departments. Contracted services is an increase of 11,000. Vehicle rentals for the cost of the municipal garage plus the surcharge in gas. You'll see a supply increase of 117,614. This is in your construction materials, 1,418. This is due to the yellow um, snow removal signs that they put out. And other supplies is the bulk of that increase at 116196 this is the cost of the estimate for the salt since the contract will expire before fiscal year 24 so they will have to go out to bid sidewalks is on page 62 this is flat funded from last year and then we'll move on to street lights unless you guys have any questions Councillor Gelinas. Thank you. Um, can you go back to the other supplies line that you just reviewed? Did you say that was salt? The other supply is the increase in the salt. Correct. That's winter operations, salt yes. and sand. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I will add this year we were able to take the surplus material of our old contract and actually pre bought and stored the salt. In this fiscal year, that saved us about $38,000 doing that. So we may have us th that same option next year. And if I may, uh, I if I remember correctly, does our uh, the brine solution that we have in place that reduces the amount of salt that we need, or, or am I not remembering correctly? No, it's a thousand tons less. So at $80 a ton, that's an $80,000 savings. Thank you. So we'll move to street lights on page 62. There was an overall increase of $200,773 or 38.6%. In wages, there is an increase of $9,733. This is due to a side agreement for the contracts for the license that are required for this position. Uh, contracted services, there's an increase of $171,830. The increase for utilities was 107185 of that. That's due to the estimate increase of the power delivery. There's an increase in vehicle rentals of 38490 This is due to the new rental of the pickup for the electrician. Um, superintendent and the more hours for the bucket truck that they're using 
and of course the surcharge of the fuel. Increase in repairs of signals of 20,530. This is for the repairs um, for the accidents that cover our deductible of 5,000. So if the insurance um, covers the accident, we, are, we pay the 5,000. So they have to budget to cover that. Um, so that's that piece. So waste and recyclable collections is on page 62. Overall increase of 46,808 or 5.3%. You'll see a decrease of 2,000 in wages. That's due to the allocation of the division. Um, they're not using as many if they're not needed. They don't um, put the employees out there, so they have a savings. For contracted services, there's an increase of 48,808. This is the waste collection services uh, per the contract. You're gonna see an increase of 49,368 this year. This is due to the change in the CPI, the consumer price indexing. You're gonna see an increase in the outside rental of 2,000, but there's an offset of a decrease in the vehicle rental for 2,560. The department will be reduced in rentals by two days for outside rentals for a wood chipper. So we're on to waste disposal, page 63 you'll see an overall decrease in this department of 16,255 or 2.2%. You'll see an increase of 9,664 in the wages that's attributed to the steps and overtime. Contracted services, you're gonna see a decrease of 26,189. The utilities, you'll see an increase of 53,161. Um, with all the other, well, actually, you'll see, sorry, you'll see a decrease in the utilities of 53,161. Uh, unlike all the others, this is due to the new flow meter that was put in with the sensor last year or, last year or this year, um, so that you'll see a reduction in the utilities in that facility. Uh, but you'll see an increase in the ash hauling for 30,250 due to more loads of ash being, being um, brought, transferred. Supplies, you'll see an increase of $100 for office supplies. $1,500 increase in the office supplies is for replacement cards for the new system. Uh, that is offset by a decrease of 400 from the small tools and a thousand from the other supplies for decreasing in, in the testing supplies that are out there. The fixed charges, you'll see an increase of 170,000. This is due, as you saw in the other department, for a biannual professional engineer license renewal. This is only every other year, so you won't see this next year. Do we have any questions before we move to open spaces and trees? Councilor Scott. Thank you. So can we go back to lighting for a minute, please? So I just wanted to look at this a little bit. So miscellaneous services and then construction materials. I just wanted to talk about that a little bit more, please. Because those are both up. Can you talk about that a little bit? What is a miscellaneous service for street lighting outside of what we already have here? You say that I need to take a deeper look at this. Wasn't because it says it's up 200%, which is, hmm. it goes $4, from 2000 last year to 7000 this year. The final budget is, is 6000 six. Oh, six. Yep. Yeah, You're that right. last yep. column. Yep. Yep. That's the GIS software license for the fiber. So we ran our own fiber system with Hawkeye as our consultant with that. Okay. Um, so that's, and that's shared with the school. Sorry, uh, excuse me, do you mind moving the mic closer Sorry. to you? Miscellaneous services is, is still that fiber fee is split with the school department. So that's oh. new this year. We ran our own fiber last year. Yeah. We, you know, for any repairs, only use that funding if we need it. Um, but we never had that funded before. So that's miscellaneous. Okay. So fiber for, you know, your protected data collection. And the, and the construction materials? Construction materials. Uh, 
Most of that is going to be your increase in inventory. I know they had to do, um, they are starting to replace the LED light bulbs. Right. And so part of that is getting the inventory for those bulb replacements. Mm -hmm. Those, the significant system was installed, Dan, help me out. Was it three years ago, four years ago? 2010. Oh, I guess a long from. Yeah, because I thought they did like Ash Street already and some, some areas have already so been So now done. we're starting to see that bulb replacement schedule that we hadn't and we did not have an inventory on hand for and i believe the bulk of that is your led bulbs and there is a little bit of the accident the stuff poles. within light poles too so if it's right. a light pole it was the end of this and if it was a traffic signal it's repair to signals so. okay and then just to go back utilities mm -hmm. so the cost of light our city is up 118 percent for electricity mm -hmm. i just want to put that out there that's uh I'm just saying this just so the public can hear that. That's a, we're all seeing it at home, but this is what it is for the city. That's quite a significant amount to go up. Um, and then the waste. So I want to go back to the ash hauling. So on the ash hauling, I mean, I know we're down in the whole department, and I appreciate that. But up 30,000, is that what it was, up for the ash yep. hauling? Yep. So is that ash coming into our city, and we're taking care, and we're maintaining it? Right, it's part of our contract with MWAC is that they pay us, right. I mean, we pay them for our trash being delivered and then they pay us back for the, tra for the ash that they give us. And what happened this year is there was an overloaded truck that tipped over, there was an accident at the solid waste facility, and they were being more careful about being under the limit of what a truck should carry. So you can't fill it to the top. Mm -hmm. and there's only so much tonnage that's supposed to be in there, so they're a little bit shy on just kind of staying below that amount. Um, where they weren't as careful before. So our, you know, fill it to the top has kind of been the routine. You pull it out and you haul it. Um, is that they're, they're staying within that limit of what is legal on the road. So that increased the hauls. Got it, okay, thank you. Um, if I could, going back to street lighting, Councillor, um, one of the things that we're running into is we have a lot of hit and runs with our infrastructure. So that has to come through on our insurance. We have no way really of identifying who's done it. So we're absorbing not only the experiencing rate, rating at MMA, but we also have to pay the deductible with that too. Okay, thank you. Councillor LaChapelle. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And street lighting, on the LED ones, are there different lumens that you put in there? Um, because at times it doesn't seem really bright. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I've traveled to different cities and some intersections are just really, really bright. And I, it just doesn't seem to pop. So one of my concerns, one of my concerns were uh, the pedestrian that got hit mm -hmm. on the corner of um, Lisbon and East Avenue. Um, now I know we get ambient lighting from the different businesses that are there. But late at night, uh, if it's raining and age has a factor, for some unknown reason, I don't see as well as I used to, uh, the older I get. And it just doesn't seem like we're lighting our intersections very bright. So just a question on that. That is a good observation. Uh, when we did our <clears throat> phased in LED conversion, we stuck with all the same lumens in the intersections and on the main arteries. Those are 120 watts. Downtown, they're 40 watt <clears throat> at the intersections. Um, those could be changed, but at the time, the council and the department went with a standard light fixture to keep everything uh, more in tune um, as far as having inventory on hand. Um, so they didn't want to have 10 280-watt light fixtures and then 340-watt light fixtures. They just went with all the same. It also provided more savings for the city at that time. I'm just concerned in some of our intersections. They just seem, they seem dark. And if it's raining or if it's snowing, you just can't see. And I can, I can understand how if somebody's not following proper procedure on crossing a street, 
it's very easy to miss them and or actually hit them um, so what what would be the cost on it's a twofold question if we just took some of our major intersections in the city and just went from a 40 to a, or a hundred to a 200 I, and I don't know the the lumens uh, difference to better light the intersections what would be that cost well I can tell you from and a general cost, one light fixture on, uh, let's say, Russell Street, that's about a $300 light fixture. Um, an ornamental light in front of your establishment, one of those globes are about $900 a piece. So if you got four of them, that's $4,000 for one decorative fixture. Um, so if you have an intersection with four of those, you're looking at about $40,000 to replace everything, but just the globes would be in the vicinity of 16000 But in our city, where we have our major intersections, we don't have those decorative lighting. We're, Correct. It's, it's more above. And specifically, I'm just going to talk specifically about where that pedestrian got killed. Um, what would be the cost of just, let's just take that one intersection, I think there are four or five poles I counted the other day. If we doubled the luminance um, on those poles, what would be the cost to our, our budget? I would have to. We I, can get back to you. We'll put that on the parking list and get back to you on that. And then even identifying line. what our major, I'm yeah. not talking every street, but maybe we should start looking at um, just better protecting our citizens and just making these intersections is it going to cut down on accidents is it what are, I think the I think that there's more of a plus than a minus on that so if you can get back to me thank you yep thank you Dan um, Councillor Peace thank you Mr. Mayor then uh, isn't there a difference in the coloring on those Yes, they, they do come in different colors. Well, uh, isn't daylight the best one to put out there? Is that what you have out there now? Well, they come in, um, in different ranges. They're either 4,000, they come in 3,000, 4,000, or 6,000. The lower you go, you get a more softer light, like a yellow. Right. And then the higher you go, you get to the white and then more of a purple. Uh, it's, everybody sees the color differently. And there was a, when we did the initial swap over, there were a lot of complaints because the wavelength of the HPS, which was a more orange light, is different, it travels different to the human eye. And everybody, everybody's eye is different. So when we went to the LEDs, now you have a higher or a brighter bulb, and it's more of a white, and people see it differently. Um, but also remember, when we did the conversion, the wattage of a lot of the lights were cut in half. Um, there were 1,000-watt lights along College Street down by the uh, Central Fire. Now those are 150-watt lights. So you've cut your wattage to cut your power to get greater savings. Um, so that's why some of the other areas are also a little dimmer. But can't you get the same wattage in this, uh, a different color? Yes. Like if you had 40... Uh... 100, 100 watt in daylight versus 100 watt in uh, soft light. That's correct. And that's, that would be if the council wants to change to a different wavelength. We can always do that, but it comes at a cost. Uh, as of now, we've gone with the 4,000 series lights because that's what we have throughout the city. Um, there are a few places where there's still, we have probably a, maybe 40 lights that we still have to change out. They're on the list. We just haven't got to them yet. So you're saying that a different color costs us more to operate, or is it the fixture? Nope. It doesn't cost anything different. It's it's just a different shade. So what you don't, what I don't think we want to see is a white, an orange, a white, an, or you want to kind of keep it the same. It it's it just looks better aesthetically. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. We'll go to open spaces and tree works, which is on page 63 and 64. 
So their overall increase is 122,863 or 11%. We're gonna see a decrease in wages of 11,333. These are due to vacancies, um, which, and also which were budgeted at lower um, employees last fiscal year. We're credited to the winter and stormwater at a higher um, than last year. So there's a credit that they receive because they do uh, cross work with the other departments. In contracted services, you're gonna see an increase of 130,120. Across all of the increases, utilities, 23,276 in parks and pools. Vehicle rentals of 42,000 due to the increase in the city activities um, expected. So you'll see more rentals of vehicles for those activities. Repairs to buildings of 11,850 due to fencing and the playground equipment maintenance that has to be repaired and maintained. Repairs and grounds of 12,014 for the needs for the loam and in the seeds for the turf maintenance. Outside rentals, an increase of 10,000 for the bucket truck rental. Maintenance of trees of 15,000 due to the aging trees, the replacements. Miscellaneous services of 13,780. These are due to increases in the porta potties and the vegetation along the canals. Downtown maintenance group, you'll see an increase of 2,470. These are replacing damaged um, holiday lights and increased maintenance uh, for the planters, the gardens, and the fountains. You'll see an offset of a smaller decrease in two, $270 in repairs and equipments due to budget to actual. Supplies, you'll see an increase of 3920 a slight increase in the household supplies of 500 and then you'll see a, a gas and oil of 100 and other supplies at $168. Public safety supplies, you'll see an increase of 3,152. These are for replacements of the heavy duty sharp metal units that are throughout the city. Uh, fixed cost is increased of 156. These are in meals. And then just a, a note, um, the 50-50 tree program was eliminate, eliminated from the budget a number of years ago. The LA Community Forest Board um, may approve funding with these resources. There's a balance on the city side as of June 30th, 2022, the end of the audit, of 8,678. There have been no charges as of March 15th in that account this year. Um, additional, there's 20,000 that has been allocated in that fund balance list for replacements of trees citywide. Council approved 60,000 to develop and market the, tree, the city's tree bait program. As of June 30th, 2018, the balance was 57,808 and 300 has been spent to date. On 3-5-2019, the council voted to rescind all but 5,000 for that balance. As of June 30th, 2022's audited numbers, there is 3,400 in that account, and there to date, uh, as of March 15th, spent $200. So that's just a side piece. So those are two programs that the city, special programs that the city council had approved way back when. Those are um, not part of the normal annual tax base programs, but you see the accounts there. So, you know, it tends to answer those questions ahead of time. It allows for both um, forestry and tree replacement, which is a program, a longstanding program um, for years that was curtailed due to budget constraints early on that we still have funding available as people request for those tree plantings and replanting. Councillor Scott. Thank you. So is that a citizen that requests that? Is it somebody, the arborist that requests that? Who does the requesting? And I'm asking specifically because Sunnyside Park neighborhood, I've had several residents reach out to me that several trees have recently been taken down and I guess it's because of age or I'm not sure exactly, but so the forestry board piece, that's more of the city trees. 
the tree bait program are trees on private property. Ah, okay. And the program is on the city's website, so it talks about how they go about doing that. They need to get the receipt. Once they get the receipt, it's sent, submitted to the um, arborist. He approves it, and the tree boat bait program acts, actually provides you a credit on your stormwater fees. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We're going to do more marketing about that this year, too. Okay, good, because I think there's a lot of places we could use some trees, actually. Yep. Um, can we go back to the public safety supplies? That is the Sharps containers, correct? Um, that's up pretty significantly. Are, have we added several more throughout the community, or is this because of emptying them? What's the situation with that? Some are replacements and some are new locations. Some are replacements. So have they been broken? Yes, <laughs> they get damaged all the time. A lot. We are replacing the plastic ones with metal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have a list of where those are located throughout the community? Can we get that, please? Yep, we can send that to you. Mm -hmm. Councilor Pease. And I hate to go back to the trees, but when the city uh, repairs sidewalks and roads and lines and they take trees down, do they automatically be, get replanted new trees? Or does it have to be a request by the people that have the property in front of it? Or? So if it, it was taken down for a road project, we replace them right during that road project. If they were replaced because of they were dying and we don't have a project going on, they're on an ongoing list to get the stumps removed. That's an ongoing program. And then it gets carried back where they go back and plant in that general vicinity. So both things, some are immediate and some are more a long-term plan. Steve, our, our March, our arborist, has an ongoing list of requests in um, an area like Pierce Street with a Wedgwood project. We're looking at adding new trees in that area. Um, so that's in cooperation with, a di with another project, with a private project. So there's well, lots of ways we put trees in. Okay, I've had a few people ask me for, they took my trees now. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is, they'll, they'll come back. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So next we'll go to the hydro, um, electric and canals on page 64. You'll see an overall increase of 11,497 or 7%. Increase in wages uh, slightly at $27. The contracted services, you'll see an increase of 11,645. Um, most of that is within the utilities. A small portion is in the miscellaneous services of 600. The utilities are at 11,295. You'll see an offset decrease of 250 for the repairs to equipment. And then for fixed costs, you're gonna see a decrease of 175. This is all within the property insurance. It has been um, seen a decline because there haven't been no claims. So where you see an increase in all the other insurances, you're gonna see a decrease in that um, property for that. We're going to move to municipal garages, page 65. The overall increase is 300839 or 248%. You see a decrease in the wages. This is offset from the, as Heather had mentioned earlier, the charges for the other departments. So where the charges for the other departments are going up, this offsets and decreases the wages uh, for regular and overtime for the internal charges. Um, currently, right now, as she mentioned earlier, there are three vacancies within the mechanics. Contracted services, you'll see an increase of 79,436. You'll see an increase in the outside services of 15,100. This is for repairs for rusty bottoms and frame, uh, rusty bodies and frames. Repairs for vehicles of 42,000. This is based upon cost of repairs increasing and having to be subbed out due to the shortage of the staff. Repairs of equipment of 23,000. You're seeing the same repairs of vehicles due to the increase in parts cost and the shortage of staff and having to sub out the repairs for certain vehicles and equipments. Miscellaneous services, you see an increase of 1,385. 
This is a slight increase in the user fees of the RTA repair software. You see an offset by decrease in the service training of $2,050. This is due to the crane testing being removed uh, from the budget it was in last year. There are two individuals now that are trained in the uh, mechanics for that. So there's no longer needed training. Supplies, you're going to see an increase of 333549 You see an increase in the gas and oil of $338 and $155. This is due to the market. Our new proce uh, prices are locked in to start December 23rd. Uh, you'll see a decrease in the department apparel of 3906 this is due to um, the rain gear that was budgeted last year is not going to be needed to be budgeted this year. Household supplies decrease of five. Sorry to interrupt. What do they use the rain gear for? Like they're in the garage. Or responding, to calls, responding to calls. Responding to calls and roadside the repairs. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. So you'll see a decrease in household supplies of five hundred. That's due to budget to actual. Other supplies, you'll see a reduction of 300 um, due to the safe clean parts for the washer service agreement and the welding supplies have decreased. Fixed cost, you'll see an increase of $399. This is for within their contract, they're covered for meals for increase of overtime due to the vacancies. So I'll stop there for any questions on municipal garage. I will jump in and, and let you know we anticipate a lock-in adjustment for gas and diesel. There is a savings that will be noted there that will be part of the proposed adjustment six coming back to the council. And how many mechanics do we have? Or I guess so, municipal garage workers, like do we, do we have other employees there besides the mechanics? Yes, we do. We have one payroll clerk that works specifically with the garage. Okay. We have a parts runner, we have a uh, welder, and then a supervisor uh, and a manager. Okay. So, uh, and they all help. I mean, even the manager helps when they need to. Um, so again, I think there's five total? Six. Six total? Six and three vacancies. Okay. And we have posted these positions as level C, A, B, or C, so we're looking at for all levels of mechanics, for those of you who are watching. <laughs> So how many are we down? Three. Exactly. We're down three. Okay. Wait, and how many do we have right now? <clears throat> so right now, if you look, not to flip back, but if you look on page 32, the bottom, you'll see the municipal garage organization. So we have the, the operations superintendent. We have the equipment mechanic supervisor. We have the lead person the half position that does the administrative the billing for the municipal garage that Marianne mentioned, and then we have the welder and then the mechanic positions. It's mostly the mechanic positions that are vacant at this point. So if I'm understanding this correct, um, we have approximately three mechanics and we're looking for three more. Right. Okay, thank you. Councilor Scott, did you have a question? Oh, I'm good now, thank you. Councillor Pease. So is the uh, those three positions, are they in this budget? Is it? Yes, they are. All right, so they are already accounted for. It's not going to be added later. No, that's correct. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Councillor uh, Harriman. Thank you. Uh, but then also on the new service request, there's a request for two more. Mm -hmm because that's the number that we actually really need to maintain the equipment we have. So that's why there's so you, a lot of subbing out of work right now. So you should have eight, right. but you currently have three, mm. three positions filled. Okay, thanks. So we'll move on to public buildings on page 65 and 66. So you'll see an overall increase of $11,036 or 3.8%. Wages, you'll see a, a slight increase of 6727 Contracted services, you'll see an increase of $4,188.
you have a vehicle rental increase of 2,388. It's due to a slight increase in all the three vehicles that they rent for the garage plus the surcharge of fuel. Repairs and meters increased by 300 due to the repairs to the parking meters. Miscellaneous service of 1,500 for memberships for the share center. This will allow city departments to access to purchase items from the share center and save the city money. So when the share center was our tenant at Martell School, we did not have to pay for a membership. That was part of the agreement now that they are no longer our tenant. It, if we take advantage of that, um, and that's the citywide fee for the share center. And we do use that facility a lot, given the cost savings. So supplies, you'll see an increase of $121 for small tools, 311. Fuel for equipment, the snow blowers. Then we'll move to public works building, which is on page 66. You'll see an overall increase of $60,922, or 32.8% increase. Contracted services, you'll see an overall increase of 59,672. The increase in utilities, electrical, and heat is at 49,910. Cleaning service is at 3,752, as mentioned before, the current contract will end fiscal year 23. A new contract will begin in fiscal year 24 with an increase. Uh, repairs in buildings, you'll see a $6,010 increase due to the HVAC um, preventing maintenance coming online and upgrading the entrance door at Public Works for better system of, um, for the office to be able to see who is down in the, the doorway. And then supplies, you'll see an increase of 1,250, and these are for folding chairs in their meeting room. As they have more meetings in that location, they need to have um, chairs replaced and have multiple um, access to more chairs. City-owned parcel is on page 66. You'll see an overall increase of 42,488 or 61.4% increase. Um, this is contracted services. You'll see an increase of the 42,488 in utilities for 4,225. This is for the power increase for the canals. You'll see the, that increase for that power. Um, telephones, 2,506. This is due to First Light's increase. That's the company that we use for telephones. This is offset by the decrease in the Martell school cost. They're estimating with the sale um, of having about a savings of 5,243. And we mothballed the building at this right. point. With the, with the share center out of there, we've mothballed that building. So any questions on the public buildings? Is the uh, cleaning service that's used for public works, is, is that the same vendor as City Hall? I believe it is. Is it Bert? Yes. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Thank you. Councillor Gelinas? The similar question. I understand that there's a new cleaning contract coming into place. I'm, I'm questioning the frequency. I mean, a lot of businesses have had to really cut back on cleaning because it's an expense, necessary but still an expense. And I don't need the answer tonight, but I would be curious what the frequency of the cleaning services for our city buildings. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? So that pretty much wraps up the public works suite of accounts. Um, Tuesday is obviously Monday as a reminder. Um, we have the joint committee meeting with the school committee. Tuesday is a workshop right before the regular city council meeting. We'll be discussing social services, recreation, and the recreation activity funds. Um, so that will, and then we start our Tuesday, Thursday, so that next Thursday we will be covering police, drug for forfeiture, fire, 911, 
TIF and then CDBG will be presenting their budget that night as well. And that would be a week from today, Thursday night. Thursday. Okay. On so, the, the, oh, sorry. sorry. On, the, on the 23rd. Okay. Uh, on the Tuesday, is that a budget workshop uh, taking the full hour from uh, six to seven? Uh, that's what it's planned for, yes. Okay. Further questions or comments from the Councilor Gelinas? I just want to commend you, Director Roy, your first time at BAT, and uh, I just think you did a really great job. You did a really nice job outlining and explaining things for us, so thank you for that effort. I could tell you put a lot of work into that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you to uh, all three of you, and thank you to, uh, to everyone in the back. Uh, I, I guess we're done. Have a wonderful evening.